Hi guys, my name is Valerie and I'm a real Prague guide, but today we're actually not in Prague, we are in Kutna Hora. A couple weeks ago we asked you guys what kind of video do you want us to do next and the majority of you answered another town in Czech Republic. So we just had to start with Kutna Hora because it was one of the most historically important towns in the Bohemian Kingdom and it's also really pretty. According to the legend, Kutna Hora's history dates back to the 13th century when a monk found a silver rod sticking out of the ground. Ecstatic, he undressed his habit covered the rod with it and ran back to the monastery to announce his discovery. Soon miners from Bohemia and what today we know as Germany started to arrive and built a mining settlement here and they named it Kutna, monk's habit, Hora Mountain. Who could have back then expected that this mining settlement will produce at its peak over 30% of European silver and Kutna Hora will be one of the richest European towns. We also like you so much guys that we visited Kutna Hora twice to film this video. That's right, the first time we came here it was hell temperature outside. In our today's video we're gonna show you how to get to Kutna Hora, what things and important sites you should see here and also show you some cool local spots. We also are gonna visit two interiors of two buildings in Kutna Hora, so stick around to see which ones do I mean. But let's start with Prague, so let's come back there. A lot of people when they come to Prague stumble upon this gate at least once. It's called the Powder Tower, but did you know that it used to be called Kutna Horska, meaning the gate of Kutna Hora, because it used to have a road that led from here to the city of Kutna Hora. Also back in the day the only way to get there was either by foot or by horse. Fortunately nowadays we can just take a train from the main train station which is just around the corner. Before you go up the escalators here, buy a ticket. All you need to say is that you want a ticket to Kutna Hora and back. Then come to this board. See, this is the train that goes to Kutna Hora and it leaves from the platform 3. Ignore the letters. Okay, let's go there. Time to make yourself comfortable. By the way, our pro tip, we recommend taking a direct train so you don't have to change trains midway. The direct train leaves every two hours. You can find the schedule of the train online or download an app IDOS, that's for free, and it will make your Czech public transport life much easier. After about 50 minutes, you will arrive to your destination. Well, now we have two options. We can either take a bus or walk. But since it's just 15 minutes to the first stop, the Bone Chapel, we can walk there. And here we are. This is where the history of Kutna Hora started. Remember the monk who discovered silver? He ran back to his monastery, which is right here. This monastery is called Sedlets, and the biggest attraction of this monastery is inside of this little church behind me. It's called the Bone Chapel, and it's decorated with 70,000 human skeletons that are arranged into pyramids, chandelier, chalices, and other different shapes. Unfortunately, we cannot go inside to show it to you because they don't allow to record inside, but there are many illegal pictures that you can find on the internet, so check them out. So we are now here in the former monastery grounds. That's where you can find the Bone Chapel. A lot of people come here only to see the Bone Chapel and completely ignore this other part, the historic mining town, but we will go see it. Before we leave though, make sure to peek inside of this beautiful Baroque Gothic cathedral. There are some haters out there that say that the interiors of this cathedral are covered in ugly plaster, but we, people of culture, appreciate the great work of the architect Santini Eichel. Actually, the grounds of the former monastery are used today as a tobacco factory. I guess you can still say that Sedlets is sending people to heaven. The walk to Kutna Hora is quite long. This time we'll take the bus. You can take bus number 11 and get off on this stop or number 14. 
and get off on these stops. First thing you need to see is the Cathedral of Saint Barbara, or actually the Church of the Cathedral type, because in order for the church to become a cathedral, it needs to be the seat of the bishop or the archbishop, and this one is not. This church was built at the end of the 14th century, and it's special in many ways. First of all, have you ever seen a cathedral standing next to the forest? Usually churches like that were built in the middle of a busy town or a city, not outside of it, like the Cathedral of St. Barbara. Maybe you can guess in the comments why was it built outside of the center, and we can tell you if you were right or wrong. Secondly, this church was never finished. Take a look, this whole part is missing. This time we will tell you why. It's because they ran out of silver, which means they ran out of money. Huh, I guess somebody will have to finish it next time. But let's see what is inside of this beautiful church. Check out the beautiful vaulting. If you look closer, you will see that there are two types of patterns there that meet in the presbytery and many crests of Bohemian Kingdom and the noble families. By the way, we would like to thank St. Barbara's Parish for allowing us to film here. You guys are awesome. They did ask me not to say anything inappropriate, so I'll keep my jokes holstered. This cathedral managed to hide something from the locals for centuries. In the end of the 19th century, they were doing a reconstruction of the church, adding new windows in the back of the cathedral. The builders already cut through the wall when the plaster crumbled off and revealed beautiful Gothic frescoes that were perfectly preserved. You can also see some people minting silver coins. They had to work in pairs. One would smash the silver with hammer and the other hold it so it doesn't slip. The job of a second person sometimes was too dangerous and it was done by prisoners. At the price of the couple fingers, their sentence would be shortened. Check out this statue, guys. This is the statue of the silver miner. It's especially interesting because of his outfit. I don't mean the simple white rope that they have, but this leather apron around his waist. It looks like he put it backwards in early in the morning when he was getting ready, but it's actually for a different reason. Back then, miners, to get to the mines, to different levels, they had to slide on a wooden slides and not to get splinters in the places where they shouldn't have them, they would use this thick, leather apron around their waist and they would just walk around like that. It's a very nice outfit, I like it. There are also some newer beautiful frescoes from Baroque period in this cathedral. For example, this one that is portraying the founder of the Jesuit order, Ignatius of Loyola. Jesuits were very famous for spreading Catholicism all over the world. And here we have the portrayals of different continents, but one is missing. Maybe you can figure out which one and tell us in the comments, we'll see. To admire the interiors of St. Barbara's Cathedral, you can climb up the steps to the balustrade and read about how exactly cathedral was built there. As always with cathedrals, it wasn't that simple. You can also go outside and see the view from the cathedral. Check out these original Gothic furnishings, very impressive. When you are done with the cathedral, you can visit Corpus Christi that was built to be a bone chapel. This one does not have any bones inside, but beautiful Gothic interiors that survived even after it was put on the top 100 endangered monuments list. Does this remind you of something? This is so-called Charles Bridge of Kutna Hora. Oh hey, this is Saint Barbara. Saint Barbara had a lovely life. Her father imprisoned her in a tall tower because she wanted to be a Christian and one day she miraculously escaped. 
chased by her dad who then beheaded her. I mean, I also once ran away from home, luckily I only got the silent treatment. She is today a patron saint of minors, which is why this church is named after her. Opposite, you can admire the beauty of the Baroque Jesuit College. It's a gallery of modern art today. You might get hungry in Kutna Hora, but don't be afraid, miners got hungry too. They were strong men and needed proper nutrition. Kutna Hora is full of places where you can eat and drink till you drop. Our favorite place is Dachitskih. They have amazing Czech food and the portions are enormous. What did you get, Václav? I got uh, Poredo dumplings with uh, duck and uh, cabbage. Will you show us what's inside? Duck. <laughs> <laughs> and I got... Uh... Quack, quack. <laughs> <laughs> and I got the potato salad, as you can see, we like potatoes. And this uh, ginormous uh, <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I hope you didn't hear that. For coffee, we recommend Cafe Havlicek. They have cheesecakes Vatsov is obsessed with and iced coffee that made heatwave bearable. You can also grab an ice cream just around the corner and a quick slice of pizza here. We go to all of these places on our tours and on our days off. Food is delicious and it's 30% cheaper than in Prague. Okay, back to sightseeing. What next we should check out in Kutna Hora? Stone Fountain. This was actually a water reservoir. Because the water would be poisoned due to silver mining, they had to bring it using a system of wooden clay pipes and store it in reservoirs like these. Stone House is one of the most beautiful bourgeoisie gothic houses in Europe today. I wish my house looked like that, but on the other hand, they probably have ghosts inside. The Plague Column. Or you can skip that one, I think we've had enough of epidemics now. The Italian Court. This was a mint, a place where they would make coins from the silver that was mined here. I wish they still had some coins left, I spent all of my money in Dachitskih. You can also take a tour here through the interiors, it takes about 50 minutes and we recommend it, it's fun. St. James Church and next to it is this beautiful view. And this is our favorite, the Little Castle, a former Gothic residence that nowadays provides the tours to the underground mines. It is one of the most memorable experiences that you can have in Kutna Hora. You just have to book in advance. But if you have claustrophobia, I would think twice about it, because the lowest part of the mine is 120 centimeters and the narrowest is 40. Maybe you would appreciate more of the toilet over there. Alright, it's time to go, Kutna Hora. You are a very beautiful town and I wish I could stay here for longer, but I have tourists waiting for me in Prague that I need to guide. See you soon again! So we were shooting a thumbnail for the video and we just left our stuff on the ground as always. Next thing we know we turn around and a dog is pissing inside of the, <laughs> inside of the camera bag. <laughs> this is awful, please put your dogs on a leash. Please.